How you going guys? So this episode's a little bit different for me. We're in my shed and we're not out on the tracks. I'm installing a three inch superior lift kit to my year 2000 GU Patrol. So for this you're gonna need a few things. I've got caster bushes uh, for the radius arms. I've got front and rear three inch springs, four inch shocks, mono uh, remote race shocks all around. I've got um, the front and rear adjustable panard rods, adjustable steering arm, extended brake lines, and like a proportioning valve extension, drop out cones, coil retainers. And yeah, I'll chuck that off as I said it. I'm a chippy by trade, I'm not a bloody mechanic, so we'll give this a crack. I'm learning with yous. Let's get into it, because I'm running out of time. All right guys, fitting this suspension, I wanna run through some tools you're gonna need. Makita torque wrench, um, or rattle gun, trolley jacks, car stands. You're gonna want spanners, um, ratchets, sockets, shifters, allen keys, deep set sockets. You're gonna want up with the Suspiria suspension, you're gonna wanna go up to a 22 and a 24 mil um, spanner. So make sure you have them. Open-ended ratchet spanners, life savers, um, a breaker bar, hammer, steel brush, um, anti seize, lock tight, and a few other little bits and bobs. I think I've covered most of it there. So that'll be a good start anyway. I have been using, take this off for you. The other night, okay, before you start, a couple nights before, start putting on, this is just like fast release, Penetron, it's just anti seize. So start chucking some anti seize on all the nuts and bolts you're gonna touch. And then it's gonna make it that bit easier anyway when you go to try cracking. All right, update. At the moment, we've got the chassis. The chassis is on jack stands. Now I'm using my trolley jacks. I'm gonna um, jack up the front diff. I'm just gonna change the extended brake line first in case I over -ten tension it. I'm gonna change the extended brake line now so in case dropping the diff down to get the springs out, I over extension it. So that's first. Everything's pretty set to go. I'm gonna undo the shocks as well. Undo the shocks at the top. See how we go. All right, the brake lines are just as much as a pain as I thought. So, you got the brake line there. You got two little nuts and right there. I don't know if you can see that. Up in here, right up in here, I've got to undo this line running down here, which runs down to this here, and you got to undo that. Right, eh? As you can see, I'll take that off. Old brake line, flip that around. Old brake line, new brake line. That's to allow for this is a three to five inch brake line, but uh, it just gives you that a bit more peace of mind when you're flexing it up, boy. But yeah, that clip. If I can get it, that clip installs in this bracket around that. So I just used a screwdriver to pry that clip off to get the brake line up on that point. So new one's going to go in. See how we go. That is one extended brake line in. See the new line up there. Took me way too long to be honest. Way too long, but. I've done that one, the rest should be quicker. Let's see, let's see. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo the, undo the top of the shocks and yeah, start looking at doing the shocks and coil. So I'm just gonna use the level and a tape. I'm just plumbing down, plumbing down, get the lines in the middle, go down to your wheel and measure to your, um, to your hub. And that'll at least give me a rough idea of pulling it when I'm adjusting the panard rod is just pulling that dip back to close to center so just to get me to a tire shop to get a proper alignment all right quick tip if your shock's spinning and it's turning you can actually there's a socket in here you can chuck another spanner in there and that'll hold your shock against that mount as you start undoing summary 
sway bar disconnected, extended brake line in. I've got the chassis on the jacks, got the wheel off, undone top and bottom shock mount, and bang. Well, holy doolies, I've learned a lesson. Taking the hub cap off, actual cap, looks like I'm gonna need a wheel bearing rebuild. I'm actually fairly lucky. Doesn't seem to be much dirt and grime in there. I will clean it out and re-grease. Oh man, that shook me, eh? Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Actually, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. All right, what I'm doing now, I've got the front uh, diff on the jacks. I'm gonna lower the left side first. Try to get this, uh, this front right spring out, or core spring, and see how I go installing this side. Yes, I finally have got the spring and the coil and shock out, and it was dodgy. I didn't like any bit of it. I tried to drop, I tried to drop the um, diff low enough to pull it out without compressors, because I don't like them. But yeah, I couldn't get it low enough, so I had to go around the mechanic, local mechanic, and get some um, coil compressors and use those. But it sketches me out every time. So when you're undoing these, you want to take it easy. So you want to undo like a few turns on this side, then move to that side, a few on this side, move to the other side and just release them equally. Otherwise one can spring off and it can be lethal. So be very careful. All right, so coil comparison. A little bit bigger, not massively. But a lot more heavy duty, so let's chuck it in. Both side coil springs are in. It took me a lot longer than I thought, to be honest. I had to run down the mechanic and borrow some coil compressors. Compressed the coils, dropped the diff down. I undid the back radius arm bolt, and I dropped the diff down with the jacks as much as I can while the chassis is on the stand still. Drop your diff right down. The spring will get close to falling out. You might have to comp compress it a little bit with the clamps and pull it up and out. Um, and then I dropped, I had to compress the new coil springs, chuck them up, and then I jacked it back up to compress the coil springs while the clamps were on it to, so it was easy to undo them and quicker. Um, so use your jacks with the compressing clamps. It'll make it a bit quicker. But yeah, it still was not a fun job. Well, look at my hands. I'm buggered for the night. I'm done. I'm going to have dinner, clean up, Undo a few little bolts so tomorrow morning is a little bit easier for me and happy days. Let's get some sleep and hit it in the morning. Alrighty, oh. day two, we're up to mount the shocks. So I've dropped the diff, the diff right down. Now I've got to try to get this, I've undone this shock mount, as you can see. You do that to feed your remote res through and then you can run your remote res to, um, hose through that it's gonna be a bit fiddly so right I send you we've got our shock mount off so we can pull the res up through this and feed it through also while you got everything off give your shock mounts a bit of a cleanup before you put the shocks back in all right like so so now we need to get this shock mount back in there done up and uh, yeah, try to compress the shock in. As we go, chuck a bit of 263 Loctite. I'm gonna put them on the uh, shock mount nuts and uh, just anything you don't really wanna come off. How good do I look with a head torch on? All right, once I did up my shock mount, got my shock up in there, right? And then it wasn't connected down the bottom in the shock mount, so I literally just manhandled compressed it got it up and over and dropped it in and i've yeah it wasn't too bad with the drift the diff dropped all the way down with this bottom mount because the diff's on an angle by the time i put my um by the time i put my spacer in there i can't get the nut on because the diff's on such an angle so 
I'm going to go put the other side shock on, jack the diff back up level, and that'll give me enough room to get the thread on. Also, might add, I disconnected the breath diff breathers to get the diff low enough. My hero! <laughs> My saviour! <laughs> Alright, so... We've done up our sway bar. We've reconnected the sway bar. I've reconnected the diff breathers. And we've got, obviously, coils in, shock mount, back up and in. Both shock connections are done up. And now, we're going to mark out for our remote res bracket as i forgot to order the prop one so for now we're just going to mark them out and yeah chuck that all back on and drop it back down until i get the heavy duty bracket and you want your hoses up in here and we're just going to put a cable tie around that to keep it hopefully out of the way of the wheel all right we're back down so, <laughs> turns out, I've literally gained 75 mil from that, so it must have been the um, stock coils. And I thought it was on a two inch already, but I've gained, it'll settle what, 20 mil or something, but I've chucked a cable on that, trying to keep it up out of the way of the tire. I'm gonna upgrade those brackets, I just forgot to order them. But yeah, gained 75 mil. Time to move on to the rear. All right, I backed the car out a bit, out of the shed. Because I'm now moving on to the steering arm, adjustable steering arm and adjustable pan hard rod. So we're going to get into that and fix the steering dampener up. This bloody trolley is a lifesaver. Now, with the, with the dampener, I'm just going to mark that with a pencil. I can't say I know this is the correct way to do it. But at least, then when I'm refitting it, I'll be able to get the dampener roughly in the same position. I know it's a bit dodgy, but I'm a chippy after all. All right, so what my plan of attack is here to start the steering arm and um, handhard rod. I'm gonna take the steering dampener off first, free them up, and yeah, just attack them one at a time. Probably do the uh, pan hard first, so I'll undo the pan hard here and the other end and just take it out and replace as the previous was mounted. It's not too hard, this bit. To get this pin out, I'm just putting a hole punch in there and I punch it with a hammer and that pulls, it pulls that clip out. And in doubt, get the breaker bar out and bush gun. <laughs> I've just redone, rebuilt my shed, or built this shed and moved everything into it. And this is a natural when you can't find a tool. You just gotta flick through stuff. You just gotta flick through it. You just gotta go for it, mate. You just... All right. With this tie rod end here, guys. So what I did, hit the side of the boot. That shocks it all. Keep hitting the bottom up. Hit the side, hit the bottom. And you can shock it out. Bang. Alright, so that got it. Just keep shocking it guys until it bloody comes. You will win. We got brand spanking steering arm in at the moment. It's not adjusted. I put it back to the similar what the other one was. I have done that I've plumbed down and measured to the hub there. I was meant to do the pan hard first, apparently, my mate said, but I haven't because I'm Scott. Um so we're going to chuck them both on and then do their measurements and have to adjust them and then chuck them back on. So bear with me, but yeah, you just, just drop it back on. Don't forget your grease nipple and to chuck grease in them before you use them, okay? Okay. And this is why you buy superior engineering. The thing is that chunky. Even the stock ones are strong, but these, these are on another level. So that's the pan hard rod out. So the pan hard rod, it was just simple. It's just nuts and you just tap them out. So just put it in. I've just got to adjust my pan hard rod to pull the diff back to center, which is where I'll use that measurement. All right, so using my level plumbing off the guard and measuring to the center of the hub, it's saying my diff 
the diff needs to go that way. So I'm going to have to extend the pan hard rod to bring the diff across. Now to check. To check, this is rough to get to the, just to get you to the tie shop. I'm running that off the guard and I don't care if everyone sooks. I really don't care if everyone has a sook at me. At the moment that's at 40, 47. You do that, you do that literally to the other side. You do that measurement on the other side. Once both sides are the same, at least your wheels are straight enough to get you to a tire shop to get a proper wheel alignment. And don't forget to put your pins in them, spread them, boys. Right, that's sweet as. How good's that? Steering arm, pan hard rod, adjusted. Diff is centre, we measured off the guards. Both are the same. That'll get us to a tire shop for a proper alignment. Eh? All right, guys, so we're on the steering dampener. I've fitted the universal brackets from Superior, just L brackets with the U bolts. I had, from marked earlier, I marked um, my shock setting, so I set them out to that setting. And yeah, chuck them on. Make sure your shock is straight, bracket to bracket. It's not gonna twist with the movements and the articulation of the vehicle. And yeah, happy days. It's not a hard step, guys. So just use a bit of Google uh, fitting instructions from the manufacturers and you'll get there. Yeah. Right, hey, we started the back. We started the back, so. Disconnected sway bar. Trying to get one shock undone. We've got one out. This one's been a pain with the brake lines in the way. We got the chassis on car stands again, and we're gonna drop the diff down with the jack to get the coils out. But I still gotta change that extended brake line over. All right, extended brake line is in. Diff breather's disconnected, and we're gonna drop the diff down to get the coils out. Ready? Tell me when. Here further. One's coming out this side. I'm pretty much off him now. Will you get it out? Yeah. That's one out. Oh, this side. I don't know if this side's gonna be as easy. Oh, yeah. it definitely is. Oh. Just drop it back like that, coilless. All right, coil retainers. So you can slip them in from the bottom or it can slide over the top of the mount. Either or. And then bang, screw that up in there. Bang, bang, bang. Alrighty. Coil retainers. Shocks are in the mounts. Like so. Now I'm mounting. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Spring Mounting the reservoir holders, so like so. Okay. Alright. Reservoirs are in, mounted up. A little bit dodge how you have to fit them. But yeah, now we got the reservoirs in. We're gonna Drop the coils back in, and we're nearly good to go. All right, for video purposes, this is a three inch coil spring. We're now putting back in. <laughs> hey, goodie. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Okay. You all right? 
Hey, yours is way easier than mine. Make sure, it, make sure that the coil springs are seated properly in the groove. Top tips. Now we'll drop it down and do the pan hard rod. Oh, we've got to attach that breather as well. Yeah. Right, eh? Rear pan hard. Undo that bolt. Undo that bolt. Take it out. Replace it. Very straightforward. That's what we're dealing with. Sex god. It's good looking pan hard. Alright, that's a drag link in. A rear drag link. Now with the superior three inch, you've actually got to lift this um, brake bracket up. So that's a brake proportioning valve uh, bracket. Very simple, four bolts. Four bolts and your brake um, proportioning bracket is extended and you order that through superior. All right, with your coil retainers, obviously I need to drop that, drop them in. And underneath, you gotta try hold a nut up in there while you do the bolt up. So I've taped up this spanner, the bottom of the spanner, to hold the nut in, and I'll hold that, I'll hold that up in there, and do the top up with the Allen key. Alrighty, guys. So that is the episode wrapped up, and the suspension is in. That is the final result. I'm pretty happy with it. Bunch of flex. The fitting was not as hard as they make out. So don't be afraid to give it a crack fitting it yourself. Hope the video helped, and thanks for watching.